to the Simply Stacy YouTube channel. I am super excited. It is January 2021 and I have something super exciting for you guys. So I am going to be remixing my channel, guys. I am going to also touch on self-improvement, finances, entrepreneurship, um, success tips, and of course, you know, it cannot be my channel without a little bit of travel and fashion and things of that nature. But the majority of my channel will definitely be on self-improvement. So I just finished writing and self-publishing my book, Secure Success, A Proven Plan to Prospering Personally and Professionally. It is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, wherever books are sold online. Um, in ebook format, paperback, and also hardcover. And I wanted to go ahead and align that with my channel. So my book, Secure Success, is basically about securing your success in 2021 and well into the future. And that is by being successful in every area of your life. Your simply self, your mind, body, soul, your finances, also your relationships. And last but not least, in service to others and to all mankind. So let's get into it. I want to help you guys be your simply successful selves, simply living your best lives. And today's video is the, I won't say it's the first because I've done a couple more this year already. But since I'm rebranding, you guys probably already saw it in my intro. You guys can see all of my new topics, self-improvement, finances, um, yeah, so I can't wait to share with you guys. But today's topic and video is going to be on how to start a business in 2021. And you guys can see, you can hit me up on IG. Please follow me at simply underscore Stacy. And then on Facebook, just simply Stacy. That is my business page. If you want to get in touch with me on my personal page, it is Ms. MS period. And then Stacy, which is my first name. And yes, so guys. I'm so excited about this. Let's get into it. So we're talking about starting a business in 2021 because if you have not already started a business, there's no time like the present to get started. In 2020, I started my very first business. It is my Simply Stacy store. I have been promoting that on here. The link will be in the bio. It is at my website, stacyhuddleston.com forward slash shop. That is where you can find it. I have I will insert some of my items. I have t-shirts, I have sweatshirts, and I also have notebooks and mugs. And um, yeah, this is actually one of my cute little notebooks with my passion, purpose, and prosperity, which is a chapter in my book, Chapter 11, Insecure Success. Do not forget to go out and get your copies. But it's a little notebook that I've been using to do my little to-do list in. You can use it as a journal or just whatever it is you have a need for a journal. And you guys can see below, there is my logo, Simply Stacy, in my brand colors, which are pink and yellow. We will get on that too, because I do have a video coming for you guys on branding and how to determine your brand and picking your brand colors and who your audience is and all that good stuff. But so we're talking today about a business because why not? In order for you to be successful, you have to have something that you're working towards, working towards certain goals and creating your own business, even though you have a full-time job, because I do have a full-time job. So this is like a side hustle, which I will also be doing a video on um, side hustle ideas that you guys can do or additional passive income streams. So my business is actually a passive income stream. I don't do very much with it on a daily basis. I do create new products, add new products, um, design new products and add them to my store. Um, but I don't do that every single day. But when I wake up in the morning, I may have two or three orders that they are, a, it's a drop ship company that they are filling. So mine is not only a side hustle, but it also is a passive income stream. I will have more videos on that. Let me know below in the comments if you would like to see videos on drop shipping, on passive income stream and ideas and also on ideas for side hustles because those are videos I plan to give you guys in 2021 with my new revised and revamped and remixed um, channel or YouTube channel. And I'm also thinking about doing a podcast. Let me know below if you like to see me or like to hear me do a podcast. Do you guys listen to podcasts? 
Like, honestly, I used to listen to podcasts all the time, like when I'm getting ready, when I'm cleaning up around the house. I like a podcast, but I am now currently um, in the process of researching that venture to see if it will be something that I can keep up with and that I would like to do. So stay tuned on that, but don't forget to comment below if you would like to see videos on side hustle ideas, um, passive income streams, and other things like that. And if there's anything else that you guys would like me to cover on entrepreneurship, um, finance, as well as self-improvement, then definitely let me know that in the comments below as well. So let's get to it, guys. We are talking about starting a business. As stated before, I just started a business in 2020 and it has been very, very, very successful so far. And so I wanna help you guys start a business in 2021. Okay, so the very first thing we're gonna talk about is determining what it is you wanna do. What is your business? What What is your passion? What are you passionate about? And sometimes when you're starting a business, it doesn't even have to do with your passion. If you're just in it for the money, then you can do anything. Like um, my, my business, like I said, is a store, but it is in line with my passion. It is um, motivational, it is inspirational. My shirts are, my mugs are, all of my merchandise is in line with my brand and in line with my Secure Success book as an author. And so what I want you guys to do is determine one, why, your why, that's number one. So you guys get a piece of paper, get an ink pen, you can write this down, take notes, honey, because I got a lot of information for you guys today. So number one, what is your why? Why do you wanna sell? Is it just for the money? Is it to feed your passion? Is it to do something that you love to do on the outside of you know your nine to five? Um, what is your why? Why are you doing this, right? So you write that down, that's number one. You have to create a business plan. Like, okay, so you determine what it is you're gonna do and why you're doing it, then you gotta figure out like, okay, is there a startup cost? What 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 is it that I need to get this business running? So you go ahead and do your business plan. That can be something I can talk to you guys about too. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about um, writing a business plan, but if that's something you want, to, you want me to talk about a little bit more in depth, then please put that in the comments below as well. With my particular business, I did not have very much startup costs, but there were a little startup costs. So as we get to those points, I will definitely let you, you know. Like this SWOT um, analysis, right? So SWOT is your strength, your weaknesses, um, your opportunities and your threats of this business that it is that you want to create. And once you do that, you can have a better idea of like, okay, will this be a, a viable solution? Will this business be profitable? All of that kind of stuff. You want to assess how much capital it's going to take for you to start this business. So in my case, I have a drop ship company, which means that I don't purchase all of my supplies. As people order them, they are um, made and then they are delivered directly to the individual and I thought that that worked best for me now my sister Casey she also created a business um, last year as well it is pretty in Lux. I will um, put that in the description box below and she does lip glosses so she could have done a drop ship um, company as well but because it's something that she likes to do she actually decided to make her own lip glosses um, I'm gonna show you guys Pretty in Lux. Check her out. They're very affordable. They're very moisturizing. I will put that in the description box below. And you can also follow her on YouTube at Casey Renee, which will also be in the description box below. But yes, so she had to come up with startup capital to buy her um, packaging, um, her tubes that her lip gloss is in. She had to buy the ingredients to make each of these colors. I bought about six or seven from her just recently. They're all so nice and so lovely. So definitely check her out. But so she had startup costs when it came to her business. She had to um, get the packaging for it and everything like that. So these are things that you need to be thinking about when you're starting your business. Mine was a little bit different. And then she also incurred the cost like I originally incurred, such as like setting up a website, getting an LLC, um, and all those other types of things that you really don't always think about. But if you're going to sell your business, 
um, in an online website, then you do need to do those things as well. And there are uh, certain fees that are associated with those as well. I actually want to back it up a little bit. So if you wrote number two is to create your business plan within that business plan, I know I don't want to go all the way in detail, but you need to determine, you know, what it is that you're doing. Okay. That's the number one thing. And then how are you going to go about doing it? Like, so if I just wanted to have a t-shirt company, am I pressing it? Or even with the lip glosses, like my sister does, is she making the lip glosses or is someone else making them for her and they're shipping it out? Are they sending to her and she's shipping them out? In her case, she's doing all the work. She's creating the product. She's packaging the product. She's shipping the product. In my case and in my business, it's drop ship. So someone orders, it is made. All I do, all I did initially was to design it, upload it to my website, upload it on the sites that I use, and then someone purchase it. They make it and it's delivered directly to them. I don't have to go to the post office every day and mail things out. Now, I'm sure the profit um, that my sister gets is a lot greater than the profit that I get because she can buy wholesale, she can buy in bulk, whereas I get, you know, a smaller portion of the profit, but it's still very lucrative for me and for um, a side hustle, as we talked about a little bit earlier. So yes, so how you're going to do it. So we just talked about two different ways right there with two different types of products. And then also who you serve. So who your customers are, all that should be a part of your business plan. Okay. So after we got over that, we talked about, Hey, what are your strengths, weaknesses, threats, opportunities, opportunities to sell, who you're going to sell to, who are the other customers in the uh, market? Those are your threats. Who are you competing against? You need to do your research, especially on whatever your niche is, whatever market you decide to either go into. Is it already saturated? Is it something that no one else is doing? A lot of people believe that um, it is a myth and a misconception that you cannot make money doing the same things that other people are doing. And you need to find something that is super um, new, innovative that no one else is doing which those always are good things to do too but you can't always come up with those ideas so also if you're going to go into a market that's saturated just make sure you do your research and make sure that you will end up having the customers and clientele that you need for your business to be successful because just because other people are doing it doesn't mean that your customers or your client base will purchase from them as opposed to you so you have to figure out a way to bring the customers to you Okay, so then we're, are you gonna do this full-time or is it gonna be part-time? In my case and in my sister's case, these are our side hustles. So we don't do this on a full-time basis, but if that's something that you wanna do, you have to determine what that looks like for you as well. So definitely make sure that you take that into account. Next up, you want to def define what the problem is for your customers. Why do they want yours? So with my sister, moisturizing lip gloss she didn't like sticky sticky so she wanted to make sure that she could make her own formula so that it felt as um as she wants it to feel and that was her problem for mine my customers didn't really have a problem it's just if they wanted to be motivated inspired and um something like that they can come to my site and like you know organize their life and just support, they can come and buy Simply Stacy merchandise. So I have um, Zodiac shirts like Simply Virgo and Such a Virgo or Such a Capricorn. Um, yeah, so I have all of those. I also have like Simply Living My Best Life mugs and shirts and notebooks, Passion, Purpose and Prosperity. I have um, just a plethora of stuff. You guys can go check it out yourself to see what kind of things I have on there. But yeah, determine what the problem is that your customers have and how you're gonna solve it. Basically, if you don't know what it is you wanna do for your business, you can do that. There are also other businesses such, such as consulting. That's a, a really good one for if you have a consulting practice, what's their problem and how you're gonna go about serving, okay? Okay, will your business be relevant um, over the course of time and then how will it adapt if things change? So that's one thing to take into account. Um, you can change with the times, just like with my business, I had Simply Vote shirts when we got closer to the election month, instead of just my normal, if there's current events, things happening, you can change up 
what it is that you sell based on that or you can think about another business if it does not look like it's going to be a lucrative business for you um, due to circumstances. Validate your idea. You know, you can chat with your family, your friends. If you have a social media following, then you can, you know, get a poll or ask them questions. If you have an email list, you can also ask them questions like, hey, what do you guys think about me selling this or selling that? Would you purchase it? Is this something you would be interested in? And you can kind of get an idea from other people if your business idea is one that um, people will be supporting. You have what it is you want to do. You need a name. You need to come up with a way to find so that people know that that is your lip gloss line, that that is your dropship company or t-shirt company or jewelry bracelets, whatever it is you decide to sell, consulting firm, you need a name for it. So um, we can talk about that a little bit later as well, but you could think about it and just make sure that it's something where it's noticeable to people what it is you sell. Or I say, if it's like a consulting firm, you can just say so-and-so services, consulting, financial, or something like that. But definitely think about your name long and hard. Make sure it's kind of like easy to pronounce and that um, people understand what it is and what it is that you do. So that also comes to branding. So after you do have that name, you want to make sure that you're branding your company so that when people hear the company's name, they think the things you want them to think um, and they have a feeling that you want them to have. But we will definitely talk about branding a little bit later in another video, because I have a chapter of my book, I believe it's chapter 13 called Simply Branding. And it is about branding your personal self, but it can also be applied to branding your business as well. Now, this is where the initial setup and um, capital comes in. If you have a company like I do, which is just drop ship and you're not paying for the products or the merchandise, you have to still pay for getting that business um, to be a legitimate business. So you want to register your domain name. So you have to purchase a domain. I actually purchased my domain, which is stacyhuddleston.com um, through HostGator. That is what I use for my domain name. And let's see. Yes, that is what I use for my domain name. And if you check them out. They have other um, hosting sites as well. I went with HostGator because my sister Tiffany, who also has her own um, business, The Intentional Entrepreneur, she told me that that is what she used. And so I basically just followed her roadmap, but I used HostGator and they had WordPress plugin or add-in where I could just kind of use a theme and build my website without it being like um, coding and all that kind of stuff. So it worked for me, but I know a lot of people use some other website or web host or domains with like HostGate, um, I'm sorry, Shopify and other stuff like that. I use WooCommerce on my WordPress site through my domain at HostGator. That is what I personally use. I may do a video later on comparing some of them, letting you know my experiences. But yes, you need a domain name. And I know a lot of people will try to get like a, go the cheap route and not buy a .com, but .coms definitely make your business look more legitimate, um, more respectable. And so I definitely want to go with a .com instead of a WordPress.com or something like that. So that is why I did that. So you want to get a website if you're going to be selling your services over um, a website or you want to market or you want people to know about it, have a place to look you up. You definitely want to get a website. So you're going to need a domain name. Okay, so after that and with that, you have to register and make sure no one else has that website. And so if you're not ready to start your business, sometimes you still want to go ahead and purchase your domain name so no one else can use it later on before you actually get there. You like to apply okay. for your EIN with the IRS. So you want to make sure that your business is registered with the local and the state business licenses. So you definitely want to do that. Do not skip here. Okay. 
And then like, depending on your business. So I come from a long list of entrepreneurs. My mother has a home daycare that she's been running for over 20 years. My aunt and uncle have a, um, a fashion boutique, a men's fashion boutique that they own in the city. And they have been doing that. Now they've been doing it full time for years. My mom does her business full time. She's been doing that for over 20 years. And so when you have businesses like that or brick and mortar or using your own home, you do have to make sure that that um, you follow zoning. Um, you have to make sure that like, say for instance in my mom's neighborhood, if there is something that your neighborhood allows for you to have a business in your home. Um, she does not keep a lot of kids, probably one to two, maybe three or four, um, but she doesn't have like this huge daycare, so it's never been a problem. But you do wanna make sure that you are following zoning, following any regulations, following any of that stuff, and that your business will not be in violation of any of those things, okay? Another thing is, you want to get a P.O. box. So I did this when I initially started. Um, my business is Simply Services LLC. And like I said, my Simply store is one of those things. I also self-publish my book under that same umbrella. And I did get a P.O. box initially. And the reason you need this is because all of the paperwork that you will be signing for your business and on your business and on your website will have to have a business address. And so if you do not use a P.O. box or you do not purchase one, then your home address will normally be your business address. So if you don't want that to be your business address, then you definitely want to get a P.O. box and you can get that at your local um, United States Post Office and they can help you with that. Actually, I purchased mine, I believe, online and then I just went into that um, branch to get my P.O. box key. Okay. After that, you wanna decide what the legal structure is of your business. Are you gonna have an LLC, sole proprietor? Um, are you gonna have employees? Okay, you wanna know all of that kind of stuff. Um, that's important. You need to do your research. We can talk about that a little bit later, like what are the differences and why. I have an LLC, um, Simply Services LLC is my company and then okay guys so you have all that business stuff taken care of now you actually want to get your website up and running so i will say that this was the longest part of my journey to start my business it was definitely fixing my website because i had never done this before and i taught myself over during the quarantine you know how to build a website what things I needed on it, what kind of stuff I wanted. And because I knew that I wanted this to be a part of my branding, my website is actually more of a blog. So I have video blogs for my YouTube channel that I do put on my website. I also put other articles and stuff on there that may not actually make, um, I don't make a YouTube video on. And I wanna do more of that this year. And then I also have my shopping page. Now on the other, on the other hand, my sister, she has a web page, which is pretty much just to sell her, her lip glosses. So hers is different. And I think she switched because initially she did HostGator like I did in WordPress, but I think she's on Shopify and Wixom. I can't remember, but it's a different um, company that she just um, switched over to, to do her business there. So you want to research that and make sure that it's the best thing for you. But I knew I wanted to do like blog style. I wanted to do also um, a store. And so for me right now, that is definitely working. I have plugins for Principal and Printify, which are the two companies I'm currently using for my business. And yeah, so that took a lot of work and overnight and making sure I saved things and that I didn't um, lose any data or anything like that, make sure my color schemes were together. I purchased a theme from Theme Bees, B-E-E-Z, I believe. And my theme I actually absolutely love. I don't have any hopes on changing it, but I did purchase a theme. So you can use the themes that come with WordPress if it works for you, if that's fine. But I had a vision and I really like the theme that I purchased. So you can skimp here and save a little money, but I, I recommend you getting something that you really like. 
Um, if you're going to do some type of a podcast business where you want to get monetized in that, they have themes for that as well. It just depends on what it is that you're going to do. Okay, so after that, you want to make sure that you have some kind of either accounting software, an accountant on, on um, call, or just some kind of way to keep track of your business expenses, the things that you are purchasing for your business, the money that's coming in um, from those businesses, because when it's time to file your taxes, you don't want the IRS um, saying that you owe all these taxes, or all this money for your business. So you definitely want to make sure you have something in place for all that when it's time. Okay, next you want to develop and refine your brand. So that's what we were talking about earlier. So it's when you think about branding, that is how you want others to see your company. And this is when we're talking about a brand for your business. Like I said, we're going to talk all about branding um, in a separate video. But just so you know what it is, it's what people think about when they think about your, your brand or your company. So Coca-Cola, you have something that comes to mind when you think about it. Amazon, something that comes to mind when you think about it, right? Like they're fast, they're, they have great customer service. All of these things come to mind. So think about those things and think about what you want your company to be known for. And that's how you work out that branding. Okay, so you have a brand. I hope you guys are taking notes because I know I'm up here giving y'all guys a lot of information. I don't want it to be overload. If you guys have any questions or want some further, um, want me to dig deeper into something, definitely put it in the comments below. I will be answering your questions as I see them. Um, just give me a little time because like I said, I do have a full-time job, but when I see them, I will definitely respond and at you if possible. Okay. Okay, so you've, de you've defined your brand, if it's a product or if it's a service, um, you've refined it like, okay, so this is what it really needs to look like. This is gonna be my final thing. Start your business, so begin distrib distribution. So is it this, are you making lip glosses? Are you making t-shirts, hand pressing? Or are you making bracelets for people, at Etsy shop, making stickers, whatever it is that you've decided to do, you got to get to doing it. Like as for me, I've designed a lot of stuff. I keep a my notes app on my phone and I make notes all the time of different things that I may want, like a saying on a shirt or something that just goes in line with my brand. I have a, a note called Simply Merch, which is what this is, my Simply Stacy merchandise. And I just take notes all the time. And so when it's time for me to go to my websites, I'll go and I'll start designing and I'll start making t-shirts and I'll start making mugs. I have the um, the cold and hot mugs that are travel mugs now. I have actually just got my mom, it just came to her house today, Christmas ornaments. So we didn't buy Christmas ornaments for 2020. We usually buy a Christmas ornament every year. So I created one that says surviving, uh, simply surviving 2020, because basically that was the theme of 2020. We were all just out here trying to survive. And so um, she has one and I have one. So that'll go on our Christmas tree forever. And every time we look at it, we'll remember the pandemic of 2020 and how we were basically just out here trying to survive. But yeah, so whatever it is that you're creating, go ahead and create it so that you can start selling. Are you doing, how are you going to market and promote it? So are you doing web-based? Are you doing your social media? Are you buying Facebook ads, Instagram ads? Do you have an email list that you're trying to get? We're going to talk about that too. So if you have a business and you want to get customers that are outside of just like your friends and family, you have to do stuff and maybe offer something so that people sign up to be notified when you have stuff to sell. So we're gonna talk about freebies that you can give out and that you can create and how to create them all on this channel. So definitely stay tuned for that, but this is also a part of your promotions. So you could do direct mail, emails, social media. Um, social media has been a really, really great tool for me. I also have an email list and yeah, you guys can do Facebook Lives, um, Instagram Lives. Once you start getting reviews in, make sure you share those so people can say, oh, this person likes it. Maybe I'll like it too, or I'll check it out. Stay relevant in their minds. Don't just 
like let it go, right? So even though I said that mine is passive, it is passive. I don't do anything on it every day, but time and time again, I'm sending out YouTube posts, Instagram, I'm sorry, Instagram posts, Facebook posts, um, ads, posting my reviews and changing up what I sell. Like in the winter time, I added hoodies um, to my collection first. I started just with t-shirts. That was the only thing I was selling. And as time goes by, I add more things. I think I did have the regular ceramic coffee mugs, but just this past winter, I added the um, travel mugs. I also added hoodies and I added the notebooks and journals. And I wanna get into stationery, so stay tuned for that because I love stationery and like thank you cards. And I don't know, we'll see how this goes, but yes. I'm just expanding my business as I see fit. Hopefully you guys can get your businesses up and running and you can definitely um, expand over time as well. Okay, also, if you're gonna be making contact with people, if you're gonna be going to networking events, if you're in consulting or whatever it is your business is, make sure that you get you some business cards so people can contact you, have your website on it, have like your email address so that they can reach out to you or however it is that you want your socials, that will be perfect to have on a business card as well. Business cards have changed over time. I know Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn probably were not on them before, but if you do have business pages and not your personal pages, then definitely go ahead and put those on there. Speaking of which, that is something that you need to create for your business. So um, um, my business page is at Simply Stacy or Simply Stacy on Facebook. Um, I think my sister's is just pretty in Lux. And whatever your business is, make sure that you separate that and have a business page for that as well. And then next up you want to establish an email marketing. And we talked about this. If that's how you're gonna go about um, getting the word out, letting them know of any promotions you have going on, and just getting more and more customers by giving them freebies, something to sign up for, and then they sign up and then you have a way of contacting them and reaching out to them and just letting them know what you have. Because if it's something that they want, then they'll buy it. And if it's something that they don't want, then they won't. So there's no sweat off your back for doing it, but that is something I I started off with MailChimp and then I recently purchased ConvertKit. Those are two different mail applications and we can definitely get into that too. Let me know in the comments below if you want to talk about email marketing and if you want me to like maybe go over the ones that are out there. I know there's Flowdesk and some other ones, but we can talk about it. You can do sequences like for my book launch. I did a sequence where initially to my subscribers, I offered them um, the ebook for just 99 cents. Like you guys signed up, you guys support me all year. You've been going through the process of me writing this book. So I'm going to give you a deal and give you my book for 99 cents before I even publish it and put it out there for the world to know before my book launch, which I did. And a lot of my subscribers actually bought the book beforehand at a discounted rate, which also helped me out because they were able to review my, review my book um, and put the reviews on Amazon the same day as I launched. So that was definitely perfect. So that is something that you guys can do as well if you get your email, email marketing together. So definitely in the comments below, please let me know if that is something that you'd be interested in me covering because I will do the research and I will let you know which ones are better, what they have in common, the pros and the cons of each one like how much they cost, are they free? Cause a lot of them have a free part, but like after you get so many subscribers, then you have to pay. So we can talk about all that if that's something you guys are interested in. Okay. And then the best, the best, the best, <laughs> the best referrals are customer from word of mouth, right? So you want to make sure that you're doing a good job. I've had about two or three, um, orders that either got stuck somewhere, that I ran out of something before I was able to take it off my site. And in those instances, I definitely made sure that I reached out to the customer and let them know what happened. And I always threw in something extra, whether it be a mug or, you know, a different shirt or something like that, because customer service is what keeps people coming back. And it's also what keeps people talking about your business. You don't want it to be bad customer service, you want them to be saying good things like, you know what? 
instead of them focus on, focusing on the delay, they're like, oh, she was so sweet. She threw in this extra mug, okay? So that is something that is super duper important. So you wanna ask for referrals and testimonials because they build your credibility as a company, as a brand, as a business. And that is all what you want, okay? And then the last thing is you need to maintain and nurture those um, business relationships that you've built by email marketing and your social media and reaching out to people. And if they tag you and um, like your stuff, you comment, you respond. And yeah, so that is how you can go about starting your business in 2021. Okay, guys, so that's it. Once you start checking this stuff off your list, you will be able to have your business up and running. So definitely, if you have not yet, please go to stacyhuddleston.com and sign up for the 12-month goal-setting workbook. It is a free gift from me to you, and you'll be signed up for my email list, which means that you'll have access when I when I put out things like the, the how to start your business checklist and how to brand yourself and you know, all these great tools that will help you guys to simply live your best life and to become your simply successful self all and while success, securing your success. success in 2021. So thank you so, so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Do not forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these cool things I have for you guys this year. And most importantly, share. Share the wealth, share the knowledge. If there's anybody you think can benefit from this, anybody looking to start a business has been talking about it for years, go ahead and share this video with them. Share it with the world. Why not? We can have all these new, brand new entrepreneurs out here, you know, becoming bosses, doing what they love. So until next time,